So uh, I'm here to talk the next next 10, 12 minutes about uh, my experience from a from a real life event and then what I learned from it. Hopefully some take home messages. Um, uh, so I'm a, I'm a football doctor since 20 years uh, for the Copenhagen team, national team doctor since 2018, and then I've been an orthopedic consultant. But I must only say that that uh, the the Ericsson cardiac arrest at the Euros in 2021, that was my first ever cardiac arrest in football. So so it's a very rare thing that happens for, for you as a team doctor, uh, and for me, many, uh, luckily never happens. But um, yeah, this is some of my thoughts about it. So the the episode, I won't go through that. Just saying that it was it happened in the first leg. No. No warning before that uh, from from the player. Uh, we ran to the pitch very fast um, and did the initial A, B, C, D because we didn't know what it was initially. Uh, we learned a lot after uh, the incident, but initially we, we assessed him at the head and then moved on. And when we realized it was a cardiac arrest, we started the resuscitation and uh, uh, luckily he uh, he responded well. So. Um, this this is a very uh, rare thing I just said, but for me it happened again, and um, this is uh, also one of the reasons that that we are having this uh, webinar because uh, eight months later at a at a at a Champions League qualification game it happened, but this time it was a spectator, and um, in a stadium full of of crowd sometimes very close to the pitch you sometimes get involved and i the 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 person was very close to the pitch and he fell over it was a young boy and the player stopped the the referee stopped and they called me and obviously i i, res I had to respond and i did uh, and uh, and um, did the same thing actually but this time uh, we were only two people and then you could say it should never happen, but it happened again, uh, this time in November 23 at uh, another Champions League game. And and this should just pay attention to the, the it, it might be that you have a good setup with protocols and um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, a, and a way that you want to act as a as a crowd doctor, as a team doctor, as a stadium doctor. But in the end, when it happens, uh, you just need to be to ready also as a, a team doctor um, to to intervene. So um, I'm not a cardiologist. Uh, most of us are not. Uh, I'm a sports orthopedic surgeon, but but everybody can learn CPR, of course. And um, and it's very easy. And in Denmark, it's mandatory to repeat it every second year at your at your the place where you work. And um, it doesn't take many minutes. You go through the theory very, very quick, and then you, of course, uh, practice on on these dolls that you uh, everybody knows. Um, but when it comes to the cardiac arrest, um, after the episode, I learned a lot about how it looks um, before it actually happens, like the the pre the pre symptoms, because. As a hospital doctor, you are called for a cardiac arrest, but as a team doctor, you are there firsthand initially. Um, and uh, we have seen many films, and and Jens will come into that later of how it how it um, it how you should act. Um, there are so many factors that could intervene with your um, uh, treatment: uh, stress, uh, spectators, TV viewers, the other players, the staff, the family members. And all these factors, it's very hard to 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 train, and and you don't know how they will uh, affect you until it it may happen. But what you what you actually can do is that you can do the same as every football player. You can you can pl plan. You can have your protocols. It's a good idea. You can prepare. You can talk about it. You can educate yourself. You can rehearse and take the relevant courses, which you, of course, should do, then you can practice um, uh, on and on. And, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very good idea, even though you, you may think you, you know it, uh, it's, it. You always catch up small bits, I think. And then, of course, you can uh, perfect when it, when it happens, and hopefully rare. So 
I want to pay attention to to what I learned. Now, the equipment that we carry on, the medical bag and the AD, uh, is is um, obviously the responsibility of the team doctor. Uh, but I always bring on my bag if it if it's something beyond a normal, what you could say, free kick limb injury. Uh, and in that bag, I have uh, uh, my medicine, uh, not very organized, but I know where it is. Uh, and and the cardiac medicine, uh, I was surprised how quick it expires. Uh, the adrenaline, for example, it's three months, and and up until big tournaments like the Euros, like the World Cup, you 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 tick off the list that everything is in order. But but during the season for the league games, if if you not do it ra- occasionally, you the medicine might expire. So so just just go through your bag and and pay attention to some medicine actually might have already expired and then just replace it. Uh, the AD of course uh, have battery lifespan of different length and uh, that should be checked uh, once in a while as well. So when when a cardiac arrest happens, it's not only the the player and the 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 other players it's also the staff around the player and sometimes that staff is even bigger than than the actually pay, player crowd and everybody have their own experience of an episode and needs to talk to you uh, needs to hear needs to have different kind of of help and um, the closest staff you have as a team doctor is your physio and and maybe the stadium doctor and there are different kind of of uh, algorithms and schemes out there that are very helpful and and for me I can only say it's it's very helpful before a game to meet up with the the other doctor or the the stadium doctor or or the paramedics and just say hi and just very briefly go through what your role is it's it's something I didn't do actually much before 21 but I always do it now um then of course, the facility that the games are held on, um, check check uh, like you probably always do, but just check the nearest the medical room, the the facilities. If you don't bring them yourself, uh, meet the stadium doctor, as I already said, and then ask what where should we go if something happened? Uh, where is the nearest hospital? Does it deal with everything like a level one trauma center, or does it only deal with some kind uh, with some injuries? And and also very importantly, if something happens, have a plan for who's traveling with the with the player. Is it is it the, the physio? Is it the, another staff member? That's that's a good advice, I think. And then be aware that in the stadium there are many cameras open. There are of course the spectators and the and the journalists, and all of them wants to to ask you question, especially after an event. Um, now, uh, how th- th- w- during the incident, I think it it was a nice gesture that the players make that circle, and I I have seen that circle in other occasions uh, after, and um, and it gives you it gives you a little bit of uh, work work sp- uh, uh, what you call it work um, quietness. Uh, also, the the white blankets and stuff like that is mainly for protecting the player from the cameras that is always there. Um, so after the event, as I said, there's a big staff to evaluate with. There are among the spectators also children, and and they need in a in a you could say normal language to be explained what happened, and then there are the family members. Uh, it's not your job, all of it. It can't be, but you need to have a good um, network or help by others because in the following days you can be assured that your phone will not stand still. You will be called for so many things, and you, besides that, you need to take care of the of the normal workload as well. Um, so have a have an evaluation with the team, uh, with the press. Uh, department and and especially have a set up with some uh, psychologist or at least know where to reach some if something happened. They are very good and they can really take a lot of burden of your shoulders um, in the initial phase. 
and most importantly, don't forget yourself. Um, you, you, you. It, it's very easy to forget yourself, especially the first couple of days. Uh, but, but in the end, a lot of things you might also run through with family members or staff members or even psychologists, which I also ended up doing on day four or something, and it was it was nice. Then, if possible, as fast as possible, when the player hopefully is recovered and well, make them uh, uh, come see the other players, either on a Teams call, FaceTime call, or even uh, show up. It, it's a huge help. And also, uh, the evaluation after the incident. At the Euro, uh, there was a good evaluation for the for the crowd that helped during the Euro at the stadium, where the stadium doctor and all the other uh, personnel was involved. But I wasn't involved because I had to move along with the team. So I didn't have that post evaluation. And, and that is something I missed. Then uh, after after an episode like this, you can be assured that the media will, will, will hit you. And obviously it's nice when it when the outcome is good, but you they will also come if the outcome was not good. And you need to have help uh, to cover that part as well. And in Denmark, the episode actually had huge outcome on numbers of volunteers for special cardiac causes. We call them heart runners that run if the a cardiac happens in schools now. The uh, first aid is being a mandatory topic. The number of AD sold increased by thousands. So it's it has a really positive effect that not only is good for football, but is good for everybody. And in conclusion for my talk, I would say that pre preparation, like you, you know your player, you do your screening, you are educated, you have your action plan and, and your skills and do the equipment check. That is something that we all do probably, but, but that is very important, of course. Then when you come to a facility, be curious, ask, um, meet the doctor, a stadium doctor if possible, ask about the nearest hospital. Have a good help, like uh, the press set up, your ethics, who who deals with what of uh, information, uh, what goes out and what comes in. Uh, evaluate, if possible, with all person involved. Um, and very, very importantly, ask the player that was involved about a potential media plan. Do not go out in the media before you have cleared it with the with the um, with the player. And sometimes the player wants to be the first who talks, and that could come month, even half a year after the incident. Respect that. That's uh, that's my advice to you. And if you do all that, you will have a good outcome. Thank you.